Okay, and we're back. <laughs> that episode of not to be feeling a lot better. Again, I don't know. Again, alright. Something happened IRL. Oh, honestly. Okay, but I'm back now. I'm better. And I just. And I'm also a little bit of torture. Do I still have. Uh, do I still have the, the coal somewhere? No, just a dragon's egg, but that's about it. That we got that out of the way. What did we do last time? Last time we built ourselves a cobblestone generator. Cobblestone generator. And then I'm actually original cobblestone generator to be left behind. This is a bit new, new and improved. We're just utilizing uh, this mining cobblestone right there with the water flow here. So it's right into the hopper thing and into the chest over there. And what? And basically, it should be like a manual thing. We would use like iron pickaxes because there's so much iron from the iron farm already. We might as well use it to our advantage. We might as well take advantage. We have some here. We have some here for, as well. Most people are not. Also, I didn't. I also, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the last video, but I said I'm gonna keep this box here as a means as a, like a magical mailbox thing. Like this, I got from over there, but this, but this book I got from over here. So maybe that might be a man. I'm just gonna leave it there just in case. I know I took down the item frame because that just seemed out of place. Also, I feel like that's gonna get destroyed by Duke via the lightning on top on top of the house that comes every now and then. So yeah, generally is that we take some iron from here, we turn it into iron pickaxes, we take it over there to the cobblestone thing if needed, and we just start mining to our heart's content. And surely by sh and surely but surely, we got the cobblestone right over there. Now what we need is like, the only thing left to do now is if we want to make it to the stone, or if we want to cook any food, or any smoke, any ore sound, we need a stable fuel system. I may have to consider using, using one of the modern features. I know, I know Focus uses like a, like an infinite electricity thing to power his, to power the Iron I could just chop down trees and turn them into charcoal. I mean, as you know me, I like to replant and regrow trees, in, you know. And I use one of them to turn charcoal, and then it's a whole charcoal farm. I would, I would use campfire. There's also what I don't know if it's called the campfire, but to craft like a bunch of campfires. But that's kind of tedious. Plus, you'd actually lose more resources that way rather than gain any. So it's just better safe to just grow trees, smelt them into charcoal, use that charcoal to turn even to even more charcoal, vice versa. The only doubt that it just, just doesn't turn into blocks or anything like how coal turns into like a block of coal. There's no block of charcoal in this one. Man, anyway, we win some, we lose some. Also, there's something a bit that's been on my mind for a while now. Well, it hasn't really been on my mind. It's just something I've kind of forgot about. But going back in here, just to, but going back in here, like before, I went into that parallel dimension or deep, or deep area, or whatever. I noticed something about, I noticed something about the room portal that I never noticed before. Okay, so here's the thing. This is made of blue obsidian, not normal obsidian. Like normal, there's nothing in there. This is made of blue obsidian. Not like normal obsidian, like you would normally do for another portal. Because we all know that we need obsidian to build another portal. But blue obsidian, what's that used for? Is that open like a alternate dimension of some sort? That's just something I, <laughs> that's something I completely forgot about. But yeah, there have been rune portals that have blue obsidian rather than the traditional standard obsidian. It just hasn't been on my mind. But then, but now that everything's been going, but now with all this going on. I don't know what it is, that's what I should probably pay close, close attention to. Anyway, I'm gonna go mine this uh, dripstone stuff because I do plan on making a farm out of this sometime soon as well. Because I do like the dripstone block, I think I even used them in a build once. My pickaxe and, and axe are kind of going away, go, are wasting away while being used up to its last. So either I have to put many down all my on all my things now, or basically just wait until they get, they get better to still them. Because right now my sword has a regular sharpness. This is good enough on its own. Okay, so now we got the supplies for for a dripstone, for our potential dripstone farm. Okay, point of dripstone, dripstone block, water, and then it just basically grows more dripstone. So the reason why I do I want more dripstone blocks because I'm thinking I'm thinking of building the the villager trading hall, but with like a dripstone flooring on the dripstone. 
Yeah, so far all I have is dripstone flooring. As for the walls, I'm still trying to plan that out ahead of time. Because if I'm gonna, because I'm gonna get a, like a full kit of door seal or netherite thing, I still haven't decided whether I should keep this or just just go to netherite the old-fashioned way. I should probably get, get my enchantments sorted out. So I'll need bookshelves. I also need brewing stands. Which is good thing I have plenty of those right now. Okay, what else do we need? We need like arm. We need like actually armor, right? So we need like a grand zone, a blast furnace, and what else we need? A smithing table, that's what we need, a smithing table, the one that gets you upgraded to another one. So those are, so those are the main villagers that we need so far. Let's see if anyone's picked up on what's going on here. Because I also remembered I left a message board the other day. I don't know if anyone's react to it or whatever, let's see what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah nothing really much, ha yeah, nothing much happened. Which I, guess is, which I guess is a good sign. Whoa. What the heck? Look at this iron, this is this iron golem that survived the farm. How is that possible? Hold on. Okay, that's up. This iron golem, this iron golem is alive. What the heck? How did you survive? So right now, 23 stays here. If it goes up past this area, or, or basically goes from 20 to the then we know this iron golem doesn't cause a problem with being alive. Okay, so, okay, so it's 32 now, and man's in, okay, so the iron golem there doesn't, call, doesn't, propose, doesn't pose a problem, okay, that's what I was worried about. Are okay, there any pistons anywhere? I know we have pistons somewhere. No? No pistons? Alright. I just, I just realized we're at a redstone. What? We're at a redstone. We're at, we're at a, we're at a redstone, hold on, holy moly, wait a minute. We are indeed no on redstone, and there's no redstone farm. And I know one of the ways to get redstone is by trading with villagers, which is a which is a very handy actually. More of the reason why we should, we need to continue with this plan. So I was saying that I need to mine for some redstone, and in order to mine down the caves, I need torches. Hence why you're seeing me chopping down some trees so I can turn those into charcoal, and I use that charcoal to turn the rest of the trees into charcoal, as you can see right here. It also gave me a chance to study the iron furnace a bit. Turns out it actually takes one coal to melt about 12 and a half pieces of items. And also, the best part is, if you run out of fuel, the progress is just as suddenly deletes up like any furnace. It just stays there. I can see here, there's still 50% left on the thing. That's pretty handy to know. So, as so long as you don't take out the, the item in question. Okay, so now that I got all the torches from, from the spruce logs, as I might have explained on the voiceover. Let's get let's get down to actually mining redstone this time. Oh, what the heck? A zoibad. This time I got this time I got the upper hand. So we've been through there, sort of. Yeah, we have. Let's mine the torches. We have done an in-depth analysis. Was that a zoibad? How many zoibads are there? And where are they coming from? Are they coming from over there? Is there a hidden zoibad cave system spot thing? I'm not aware of. Okay. A dark spot. We haven't been there. But I can tell you who has been. These guys. I don't think... Yeah, I haven't been here. Oh, ho, ho, ho. The skeleton's in trouble now. Alright. Oh, and the skeleton got him. Alright. Oh, oh, hey, guess range does work better against these guys, didn't it? Huh? <laughs> maybe, should, maybe should start investing in arrows, then. If that's the only way to do with the Zoibats. I mostly prefer the sword. Because arrows are limited. Or well, unless you have the infinite, the infinite enchantment, then you, then they're just not stop. The problem is that with inf with infinite on the on the bow, it means you can't put many on it. So when it breaks, it's gone. That's kind of one of my worries about you about, about investing in a bow. Although I could invest in like which we call it an experience farm. Or use. I may have to basically like spend, spend some leveling on, on the boat to repair it. But other than that, it shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been in these caves. Like, full of mobs, pointed dripstone, enemies around every corner. It's just been a hassle. 
Apart from all that, there were some new areas that was left to be discovered. Which is good, because I actually increased my chance of finding other ores as well. Not just redstone. But with that, there have been also monsters to deal with as well. So I had to fight my way through, through the area sometimes. Luckily, there weren't that many monsters down there. Well, because at the time I didn't even know it. It was night time. So yeah, here's me just looking around, exploring a new area, looking for redstone. I even come across some deeper areas. But I'm going to save this for like a better time, because I didn't really have the guts to go there yet. So yeah, we should have all the rest of the by now. Okay, this didn't take that long, but I expected. We, we got some stuff. We got another point of stone, because we actually did. And there cause, well, yeah. That's what it is. So we have enough for, for three more pistons. And I believe a few note blocks, I think. We need note blocks? I'm not sure. So here, okay, so here's the plan. I'm going to, I'm going to build a right amount here. It'll be like a bit of test tubes. Well, it'll be like that, but instead of being a bunch together, it'll be them separate in separate clusters. It's not gonna be any, it's not gonna be anything big because, well, we really don't need that much. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so all we gotta do is just get these. Okay, so we gotta do is just get these dripstones in place, and then we'll be set. Okay, come into glass plane, so yeah, so that, that as an assurance thing, so that no dripstone flies off when being pushed by the pistons. And there you go. Okay, all we need is the water. Okay, all we need is a roof. I'm thinking maple logs, or should I just use spruce? Because like, I have all these planks, but I don't know what to do with them. No, I think maple will look better. All right. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, it looks better. Yeah, yeah, it could look better. I can get used to it. What's missing is this part now, I guess. Should I put a roof on this one, or should I just leave it as it is? Yeah, I think I'll leave it as it is. I don't think it's gonna cause a problem. They start by mine. I do. Ha I do have to enforce the whole light around this area thing, though. Also, the reason why I put slabs there is to say that the pointed dripstone doesn't drop there and just start growing out there. That, because right, at that point, then that's when the because then that's when the observers won't be able to crush those things. And when the observer sees that, so, my, so the biggest problem is that if a dripstone is to drop on here on a solid block, then it'll grow and grow here and block the observer. Risky update. It'll never disperse. That's why having it like that, just so that it gets, so that it limits that, and only goes grows from up here. Hopefully that works out. Okay, so we got the gypsum farm going somewhere. That that one iron golem is just gonna stay there, I guess. Yeah, so far it doesn't need to be affecting the iron farm. It's still running smoothly. That's a good sign. So so hit so having this guy around doesn't seem to be causing it, causing a problem. So yeah, so far just uh, more progress around the base, more mining, and well, my thing. Hopefully, hopefully I do produce dripstone so I can start planning out the flooring of, of the villager trading hall. Cause I have so much villagers. Hold on, actually, yeah, I'm gonna have to activate the kill switch. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Wow, look at all these villagers. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Let's activate the kill switch. Hold on. Okay. You know it's gonna get out of hand very soon. I'm gonna have to activate the kill switch. Alright. There we go. So now they can no longer see the beds. Okay. God, it's a good thing I've gotten that kill switch. Okay. If you ever need more villagers, we'll just open that up again. I'll probably use those villagers for our, the, for the training hall as well. So. so yeah, some are gonna go to the training hall. The others are gonna go to like automatic farms and whatnot. 
I have, I have some good ideas for like a potato farm, a cow farm, who knows? It possibly is endless nowadays. Yeah, so yeah, that's all for it. Thank you all so much for watching. If you made it this far, congratulations. Like, up, subscribe, if you like, subscribe, remember to check my other stuff in the meantime. And yeah, that's it. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye for now.